Hey guys, as you probably already know, Yi Sun-shin is one of the strongest marksmen in the current meta. Even though he received a small nerf in the latest update, he's still insanely good. But I have noticed that a lot of players are still confused about what is the best build for him and how to play him at his maximal potential. So in this video, I will try my best to share some tips that I have learned so far while playing Yi Sun-shin. These are the builds. The first two core items should be Endless Battle and Blade of Despair. The order of these two can be changed depending if your team has a huge advantage or not. If your team has the advantage, then you can be more aggressive and build Blade of Despair first and then Endless Battle. The reason is because you want to capitalize on your team's advantage and snowball the enemies faster. Roll damage works better for Yi Sun Xing because his passive is already a guaranteed critical damage, so getting items that give him more critical chance is unnecessary. The rest of the items will depend on the enemy's composition. You can build him more defensive items such as Wind of Nature against heavy physical damage, Athena's shield against magic damage, or Malefic Roar if the enemies are very tanky. This is the emblem setup. Before we start with the gameplay, let me share with you a trick that will increase his farming ability and his damage output. Even though his passive allows him to do 2 considerable critical damage every time he switches weapons, you don't want to hit twice and then switch forms. There is a more efficient way to maximize his passive ability. Here, you can see that if I hit one time and switch form, he will attack way faster and deal a lot more damage this way. It's important to learn the distance he will need between him and his target in order to swap his weapon. You will be able to learn this naturally as you keep playing him. This trick is very important because when you do this, you can take down turret, jungle monster, an objective like the turtle and lord a lot faster. Welcome to Mobile Legends. Five seconds till the enemy reaches the battlefield. Smash them. At the start of the game, you want to level up his second skill first, because this will allow you to clear the minion wave a lot faster. My reputation is built on my bravery and loyalty. You won't be defeated. You should upgrade his jungle item before buying the boots so you can farm the jungle a lot faster and also gain a little bit of extra experience. Whenever you see that the enemy is out of position, take advantage of that. What a godly Franco. A good army should be Whenever you see that one of your teammates is in a fight, you can use his ultimate to provide assistance to your ally. Rain down the fire. If you can predict the enemy's moves, you won't. I would recommend maxing his first skill first, because the higher the level, the less cooldown he has, which means you can spam it way more often thanks to his passive as well. Good army should be flexible. Like when fighting, it's really important to keep track of his passive. You want to make sure that you keep switching forms in order to deal the maximum amount of damage. By the way, when you cancel his second skill, the cooldown will be a lot shorter just like many other chargeable skills, so if you don't see any target, just cancel the skill. In the early game, you don't necessarily have to force too many team fights. only fight when you see that there is a great opportunity to get a kill. Otherwise, just keep farming. Remember, marksmen main damage come from their items and level. Unlike mage and assassin or fighter, they are already quite strong in the early game even without much items. Victory will be decisive! Turtle resurrecting soon. Fire. Only by facing the enemy does one know his true self. I go wherever the wind takes me. 
unstable network. Stay loyal. Stay humble. Good game. Enemy missing. Killing spree. Well played. Here, I thought that the enemies would want to take the turtle since we are busy taking the red buff. In a situation like this, you can use his ult to scare the enemies. It's like telling them that you know they are doing the turtle so they will back off. Honor and homeland. Launch attack. Our victory will be decisive. Here, my tank and support want to go to the bottom lane, but that's not a good rotation because if we do that, we are going to be giving away the turtle for free. At this point, we have a huge advantage over the enemies. We should force a team fight by either pushing the top lane first and then take the turtle, or just go straight to the turtle. But since they insisted, I just had to follow them and just push bottom instead. At least let's get something out of it. I saw Johnson driving towards the bottom lane, so I'm hiding in the bush until he crashes. When you are fighting Valir, you can just use Purify to chase him down. His passive stun won't activate. It's important to know when you should play more aggressively and when you should play safer. Only by facing the enemy can one know his true self. Initiate retreat. Resurrecting like soon. One. Remember, when you're playing against Johnson, it's really important to always pay attention to the map and be conscious about him at all times. You won't be defeated. I go wherever the Initiate wind Initiate retreat! Uh. An ally has slain the turtle! Uh. Launch attack! My reputation is built on my bravery and loyalty. Here you can see I'm pinging my teammates to go to the right side because I know Harry's is waiting in that bush to last hit the buff with retribution. Only by facing the enemy can one know his true self. Stay loyal. Stay Initiate home. retreat. <laughs> if you use his first skill at the perfect timing, he can immune all crowd control skills. If you can Rain the down the fire. Fire.
good army should be a place like one. Sorry. A true warrior never backs down from a fight. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Thanks.